The West has stated its case. Does Ottawa, does the Prime Minister, understand the Western point of view? I suppose it's a consequence of uh, what is one of Canada's assets, that it's so large and that uh, people form into regional loyalties with... Uh, they can't identify totally with a country as big and as rich and as diversified as ours, and therefore they identify primarily with their own province or their own region, and this is a good thing. It, uh, it makes for a country which is diversified and which has inputs of people of uh, various regions and, and origins. But uh, there's a price to pay for that, and the price is that uh, you develop these regional points of views, and uh, you don't uh, perhaps give enough time to, to, the, uh, to the overall Canadian point of view. And this is not the fault of the regions alone. This is, um, this is the fault of the central government and its organs. I suppose that we haven't really spent enough time as a government communicating with the West in terms of the problems which faced us and in terms of the solutions which we must find. This is what I've been trying to do a little bit when I go and talk to the Western wheat farmer and I tell him why we can't solve some of his problems in the way he suggests because we also have to think of the fisherman in the maritime who is even poorer. And that's why I've always refused to consider Quebec as a a very special problem. Quebec separatism is a form of alienation from they weren't part enough of what was happening in in Ottawa and when it's it's normal that a government, a central government in a large country like this will have to make decisions which will sometimes favor one part of the country and sometimes favor another whether it be with tariffs or with oil or with fisheries policies or with wheat uh, we're always making some allocation of resources which means that we're taxing one part of the country to help another or putting tariffs on one part of the country to help another uh, this is inevitable in, in a country of this size and that which wants to industrialize but what is not inevitable is the kind of dissatisfaction that follow from each decision. And this dissatisfaction is because not enough people are, I repeat, speaking for the total picture. There should be people, and there are people in Quebec, saying it's not true. Ottawa is not trying to do us in because this is what it is doing. And uh, for la francophonie, for instance, or this is what it is doing to help the the official languages and make them both French and English. And we have people in Quebec here who make it their job to be selling federal policies all the time in Quebec. Do we have enough people in the rest of the country doing the same thing? I don't know, but certainly I found when I went west that many of the answers to the legitimate questions hadn't been given. It's been done over and over again. And this is the danger to Canada. It's it's not breaking up, but it's the kind of alienation and dissatisfaction which uh, comes from uh, from only talking from one regional point of view. And I can understand the West as I can understand the Maritimes and even Quebec for feeling that uh, uh, they aren't always uh, totally represented in, in the government making decisions in Ottawa. Uh, so what's the answer? It's either to break up the country and say it's too big and it can't be run by one central government, or it's to say, well, let's pull up our sleeves and not just gripe and bitch, but get in there and, and make sure that we are taking the decisions. You know, the problems of Ottawa with wheat or with oil are difficult, but uh, uh, the West also has to think of selling its wheat, it's difficult, just like it's difficult to sell potash, and it's difficult to sell, uh, to sell oil. You have to find markets. It's, it, it advances nothing by saying, well, Ottawa didn't find the solution. The solution to the manufacturing problems of textile in Quebec, which have, we're having to close textile mills because they can't meet the world market prices, 
uh, it's not only an Ottawa problem. And Mr. Thatcher's problem with wheat is not different than his problem with potash. You know, we, we try to find markets, but there's something in the nature of an industry, whether it be textile or, or potash or oil or wheat, which, uh, which, which is in the nature of world competition. And we're constantly trying to adjust our economy to make sure that we are moving in the direction where our products will be the best at the cheapest prices in the world.